Nothing will make you feel more like a superhero than pulling off a perfect day for night and watching your client's pants hit the floor. It's a super common technique used in Hollywood all day, every day. And once you get this skill set, you'll be surprised how often it's gonna come in handy. And of course, I'm not only gonna show you a hyper stylized Mad Max day for night, I'm also gonna show you more dialed back day for night that you can use for a bunch of different stuff. And if you enjoy content like this, then please do me a favor, just pause the video for one second, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. Let's get into the video. All right, so we're inside Resolve. I have these three shots because why I show you how to do this on one shot when I can just show you how to then shot match them as well. These shots came from Artlist, shot on FX3, converted to Rec. 709, and then our working color space is going to be DaVinci White Gamut. If you want to understand what's happening here, then watch this video right here. Link is going to be in the description. What do we see here? Let's just pull up our scopes so we can get a little bit more information. So what I can do is bring up my vector scope right here and then just turn on skin indicator and I can just get rid of the other two. So let's just put that right here. Okay. So these two scopes will do. So what are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind when you're doing day for night? So one, the exposure needs to be changed. We have to make it darker, a lot darker. Two, we have to control the color temperature. So we have to make it a lot cooler. And then third, we have to control our saturation because at nighttime, when the visibility is limited, we don't see all the colors. I did it, I did this before. But I dropped some gems, so I'm not going to start re-recording the entire tutorial. We're just going to play shitty audio in the beginning, and then we're going to switch to this. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm going to get better at this. So saturation is very important. If you go outside at night and hold an apple compared to if you hold it at like noon, it's going to be very different. So we have to then mimic that. So that will be the next step. And then finally, we're going to have to control lighting. So that is done using Windows. But... As always, you guys know that I believe in this. If I do my job right as a colorist and if I balance everything properly and if I expose everything properly and if I do all the earlier steps that I just mentioned right, we shouldn't have to do too many power windows. Anytime I see beginner grades, there are just so many windows going on. And once again, that's exactly what I did because you're lacking fundamentals. So you try to make up for it by complicating your grade. So now... Let's just get started. So I'm going to create a node right here. And uh, this is going to be the fun node. So we're not going to do anything with it right now, but we're going to get to it. This is where we're going to do our balance. And then let's just take it one step at a time. So let's start with the balance. So what do I want to do? I'm going to start in linear. Okay. I just put out a video. If you don't understand what I'm doing right now, right here, then check out this video. People are finding it extremely useful and the balancing technique that I showed in that video is just genuinely, as ChatGPT would say, a game changer. You guys should check it out. Link is going to be in the description to that. So I don't want to go over that in this tutorial because we have a different agenda here. One thing that I can tell you about linear gamma, and I'm going to throw up a knowledge bomb right here as well, which is everything is as accurate as what the eye can see. So that's why this is a killer, killer technique to use. So I'm going to start with my gain. And I'm going to start pulling this down to get to that part of the night, like where our exposure just looks right. And just look at like magic of linear, how much information we were able to get from our image, like before and after. This is our Rec. 709. Like this is from FX3. It's not even Alexa or Red. Like look at the amount of information that we had. And if you don't do these steps and handle your footage properly or delicately, you're not going to end up here. That's why those other videos that I'm mentioning, you guys should 1000% check it out. Now, at this stage, I just want to bring my entire exposure down. And that's what gives it the natural feel as if it happened in camera. So that's our first step. The second step then is going to be my temperature. And I'm going to use my gain right here in linear to make the image cooler. And I'm just going to start doing something like that. So at that point, it might not be a bad idea to actually bring in our references. So the references that I'm using here is uh, from Mad Max. So it's pretty extreme, right? Because I want to show you how to create like a really fun look like this look. And then I'm going to show you how to 
dial it back and make it more realistic, more safe. Let's pull it as selected image so it's next to it. So then I can really see what I'm doing. And uh, let's make it a little bit bigger to get more real estate. Let me keep just going in my gain and get like those tones in, right? So like, I mean, we're starting to get something similar to that, right? Like, so now we're getting like, like, look at this, right? So we're getting very, very similar tone. I mean, just look how far we've come. Oh my God, just using our linear gain, it is incredible. But you see like why we have to go in order. So exposure, temperature, um, what do we got going on right now? Like, I mean, we're looking pretty good, okay? So we're looking pretty good here. I mean, look at this. So this is our Rec. 709. This is where we are. Everything is very good. I'm, I'm very happy. So then the next thing that I'm gonna do, I want to control my overall saturation. So like, I'm just gonna take my saturation. I'm gonna dial it back a little bit. So like, even if we just leave it at 40, something like that. And by the way, if you're going for like a more of a subtle, like realistic Roger Deakins style of like night effect, like, I mean, this is looking pretty good. Like, I mean, this looks like really, really clean once again, before and after. So this is where we're at and it's not bad. The thing that I really wanna do is I wanna go under my sat versus sat. And uh, this is our, my shadows, these are my highlights. Where do I wanna pull the saturation from? I think my shadows are just getting really, really blue. They're super blue. I don't wanna do that. So I wanna clean that up. So if I just grab it from here and start pulling that down, look at what I'm doing. So I'm pulling all that blue and turning it into black. I can leave a little bit in there, but this to me is pretty good. Now you would go, bro, you just went so far from this look, like what the hell are you doing? So this is where the magic happens, okay? And before we keep going, I just wanna say that the limited time only sale will be ending tonight. This is your last opportunity to get 50% off Freelance Colorist and Kazi's Toolkit Bundle. If you don't wanna spend hours creating high-end Hollywood looks, then QT is the answer you've been looking for. And if you really want to work on your foundation and level up your game like 10X, then Freelance Colorist is the thing that you need. Check out the links to both products in the description. Let's get back to the video. This is the thing that you usually do not see when you watch tutorials on YouTube. And this technique is coming straight from like photography. First of all, I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna type in color generator. Drop that on. Oh my God, what the hell just happened? So I'm gonna click right here. I'm gonna go under composite mode. I'm gonna change this to multiply. Okay, this is not making any sense so far. Just bear with me. I'm gonna click right here, open this up. And now the magic happens. Actually, let me use my mouse here. So let's start grabbing this and start driving it in that direction. So now let's pull up this image next to ours and we just start driving it to where I wanna go. So even if I go somewhere around here and if I come out and if I do before and after, so before we were not getting this sort of sky. So if I go here and turn this off, see, it was like not giving us this Mad Max magic. That magic can only be achieved after doing this jiggery pokery, controlling your image. And look at how natural it feels and looks. And now if I just go here and if I take these three, I mean, come on. So before Rec. 709, and then this is where we're at. And then that's our Mad Max. So I mean, like we nailed it. Like this is... This gets me pretty excited because it's just like such a fun tutorial. This is where color grading is like so gratifying because you're just like, how did they do that? And then when you figure out how did they do that or one of the ways how it can be achieved, you just look at it and you go, yes, this feels so good. Now, the challenge is let's try to copy paste that to these shots and then see what happens. Oh my God. Guys, when your when you're foundation, when the fundamentals are just done right, I mean, just look at this. Like, look, look, look what just happened. Middle click, we're done. I think this is not gonna be that easy, this one. Okay, so I'm happy with this. I think it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm happy with this because it should be this dark, but let's just say if somebody goes, I wanna see a little bit more. Personally, I think at night, it's going to be pretty dark. 
Um, but obviously there's light on them. Don't forget, he's backlit. Like the sun was over there, remember? Like if we go to these shots, like the sun is literally over here. So my boy is backlit. So then if I were to give him the same light as this, this is not going to make any sense. There's literally moon on him. So be realistic with these things. But one thing that we can do is I can go right here and I can go to my pivot and type in 0.335. So that is locking my 18% gray when I'm working in DaVinci White Gamut. Once again, if you go, what the hell are you talking about, bro? This makes no sense. I did an entire video on that. Check this video. Link is going to be in the description. Another game changer, trust me. So you, you want to watch these two videos to really understand this tutorial. But these three videos together could might as well be a master class in its own right. Okay. So now what I want to do is I lock my 18% gray. And the reason why we do that, so we don't mess with our initial exposure where we want to lock it. And now if I go to my contrast and start opening it up a little bit, you see what I'm doing with him? And I don't want to do too much of it. So even if I do before and after, and we're just bringing him out a little bit, because what's going to happen is that if I do anything more than that, it's just going to make the entire thing water down. So now if I copy this and go here and paste it, and then go here and paste it, um, we end up with something like that. So what, what, do we, what do we think about this? What do we think about this? So let me do before, really nice, like, dark blacks, and then after, um, you know, I don't mind it because I'm looking right here in my waveform and I don't mind bringing it up a little bit and just letting it breathe. Uh, are we going away from Mad Max a little bit? Um, not really, especially here. We, we're not. And even here, you see like the, the waveform right here, how it's above that zero point. And that's what uh, we're doing now. Because if I do undo and you see, like we're crushing our blacks before, this information is gone. And now we're bringing that back. So it's very close to what we're seeing here. Okay. So I think this is even a closer representation of like what should be happening. How are these shots matching? I think they're matching really, really well. What, what did I say? Like if you like look at my sky right here and then keep an eye in this area and I'll go to my third shot and look at the sky right there. And obviously, if you look at the uh, this area right here, um, which lives, uh, why am I not seeing that when I hover over? Okay, now I'm seeing it. So it's living right here. And if I go to my second shot and if I hover over here, uh, it's living exactly in the same area. So we basically absolutely nailed our shot matching just because we had everything set up properly. And then one, one more thing that we can do to get these sort of like highlights in our image um, will be to just go in our HDR palette and then start cranking our specular exposure. So if I go in there and start cranking that, right? Like I'm starting to see some of those highlights. You see what I mean? So like we're getting, let's just keep it at three and a half stops. And if I do before and then after, we get to see that. And then in our highlights, we can just kind of bring this down to keep the overall image dark. So even if I park it somewhere around here, drop half a stop, and we end up with like something like this. And then the last step would be to go here. And then I can click on this and then just watch what starts happening there when I start moving it. Because like now when I bring it closer, it's just going to open it up that much more. So like look at the, the detail we're about to like bring out that we weren't seeing before. Now it's totally up to you, like how far do you wanna take it? Because if we go back in this node right here and try to go to our saturation and then just like bring back a little bit more saturation, you see how much closer we got. And then obviously we can just go back in, uh, let's do this and then go to our saturation and pull it back maybe a little bit. So even if I do 0.45 or 45, I meant, <laughs> I'm just gonna, double click here and do 45. So if I do this, you see like how we were able to like get a lot of this information back, which is kind of cool, like all of this. So that's kind of neat. And now we can just go ahead and apply 
this right here and then apply this right here. You can see like how we just created information out of thin air, which is kind of crazy. Cause like, again, look at this image and like how much information um, we were able to pull. And if I go here, like you don't even know that all this exists in our image. And it just like adds another dimension because the entire idea is as a colorist, not only you wanna create a mood and all those other things, but you wanna be technically sound. You wanna pull as much dynamic range as possible out of your image. And you saw like, this was such a massive difference compared to what we had before. And then it just all matches, right? So again, if I go right here and I hover over where we are, like right here, and then I go to this shot, and where are we? So we're like right there. So all of that is matching, but now we have like such a nice dramatic like pop that's happening here, like right here, which actually gets very close to like what we're seeing here. So then this would be our final look. So if we go through and break it down where we started, started with this and then went and controlled our saturation and then with our color generator technique we ended up here and now if you want to kind of dial it back and get more of a realistic look there's a couple of ways that you can do this you can go right here and then go back to your sat versus sat and we can uh, potentially grab this and pull this down see like it cleaned up the highlights even more right um, or we can just take this from here and keep pulling this down. So now that is going to be a very gentle and soft way to end up with something that's not crazy like Mad Max. And then the other way would be to actually go right here and then just start getting closer, right? So like if I, like let's just say if I want to do something like this and then I go to my, like this node right here and I go, okay, now I just want to kind of pull it back I wanna go right here in my saturation and I wanna pull that back a little bit. So even something like this, and I end up with that and that's pretty cool. Like that's a pretty good look. Now I got my anchors dialed in, my black points are clean, my whites are clean. So then I can sell this effect. I mean, it's still very dramatic, but I can sell that effect. This is our final, final look that we created. And I think, I think it's pretty cool. I, I think it's a really good look. So let me know what you guys think. So hopefully you enjoyed this as much as I did because this is why we do what we do. Color grading is genuinely just so gratifying. I I'm still smiling because when you end up with something like this, you're like, dude, like I didn't even know like where I started to where I ended up. There are other parts of filmmaking that I wanted to do when I started my career and I felt like it just over time fell off, like the, the passion wasn't there. But when it comes to color grading, and I really hope that it translates, but man, I just get so juiced. I get so passionate. And, and, and. Last day to take advantage of the Cyber Monday slash Black Friday sale. Links to both Freelance Colorist and Kazi's Toolkit is down below, 50% off. And if you like this video, then do not forget to smash the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. I will see you in the next one. Peace, fam.